It's really important to reflect on our lives so that we can learn a lesson and we can truly change. Because if we don't look back, if we don't look at what was going on, why things happened, then how are we ever going to learn? How are we going to stay away from that near occasion of sin or identify that issue in our life that causes us to fall? But before I go there, I just had to bring something to everyone because this has always been a thing that has bothered me. So I'm reading the gospel, John chapter 7, 40 through 53. And some in the crowd who heard these words of Jesus said, this is truly the prophet. Others said, this is the Christ. But others said, the Christ will not come from Galilee, will he? Does not scripture say that the Christ will be of David's family and come from Bethlehem, the village where David lived? So a division occurred in the crowds because of him. Some of them even wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. So the guards went to the chief priests and Pharisees who asked them, why did you not bring him? The guards answered, never before has anyone spoken like this man. So the Pharisees answered them, Have you also been deceived? Have any of the authorities or the Pharisees believed him? But this crowd, which does not know the law, is accursed. Nicodemus, who by the way, I don't know if you know, but Nicodemus was a follower of Jesus, but he was in secret because he was a Jew. One of their members who had come to him earlier said to them, Does our law condemn a man before it first hears him and finds out what he is doing? They answered and said to him, You are not from Galilee also, are you? Look and see that no prophet arises from Galilee. Then each went to his own house. This whole gospel just drove me crazy because I was like, Hello, he was born in Bethlehem, the house of bread, which is what Bethlehem means. Let's think about that for a moment the bread and the wine, which in the Catholic faith are consecrated and transubstantiated into Jesus's body and blood. Bethlehem, the house of bread. Just saying. Okay, but they all know. Why didn't Mary and Joseph and Jesus say, hey, I wasn't born in Galilee. I was born in Bethlehem. Even though in the Gospel of Matthew, they share the whole genealogy and prove that David, David is the root, right? David is the bloodline, and it goes all the way back to Adam, and then, of course, Jesus. But I just never understood why they just didn't say, look, he was born in Bethlehem. Hello, that's the done, end of discussion. But I guess that wouldn't be the mysterious faith that we all have today, because it would have been proven that he was from the line of David. Okay, anyway, let's go back to (laughs) my lukewarmness. This is what happened. So my husband, when he retired, and this has nothing to do with him, this was all my decision, no way, shape, or form did he lean me toward anything, push me toward anything. And let me just continue because you're probably like, speak, tell us, what are you talking about? So when my husband ended up retiring, I had not touched marijuana for years. I thought it was over. And he was like, you know, if you don't mind, because I know that this isn't your thing anymore and you don't want it in your life anymore, but if you don't mind, I'm going to get some because, you know, he's retired and I live in a state that makes it le- that is legal, makes it legal. Well, yeah, I guess they made it legal, and it's easy to get. We have dispensaries everywhere. So I said, sure, go ahead. And for a while, I didn't partake. I don't remember how long, but then I did. And what was the difference in my life? So while my husband was working, I was getting up, Sending him off to work, fixing his lunch, fixing his coffee, and off he went. And then I would pray from 5.30 until about 7.45, 8 o'clock, depending on which mass I was going to go to. Then I would go to mass. 
And then sometimes I would stay after an adoration. I would pray the rosary every day, sometimes not the best version of the rosary. Sometimes I was checking the box and doing other things, but I was praying it every day. And then when my husband retired, I felt guilty, even though he never made me feel guilty. I felt guilty. So I stopped going to daily mass. I was praying every day, but it wasn't my first fruits. I was getting up, I was coming down, I was talking to him, getting coffee, and then I would go up and pray, and then I'd come down, get another. It was very distracted prayer. It wasn't the kind of prayer that I am in now, or even that I started last September when I started getting up, even when my husband was alive and my dad was sick, getting back up at five. And I wasn't going to daily mass. So my spiritual soul, my protection with the Eucharist, every single day I would have Jesus in me. Every single day I would bless myself with holy water going into that church, which takes away our venial sins. Every day at Mass, I was confessing my venial sins to the Lord. And I was going to confession at least once a week. I'm not saying you have to go once a week, but for me, I needed to go once a week because I was very, very aware of the things that I was struggling with. And it wasn't marijuana. So I was lukewarm. I did keep my Sunday obligations, and I know there are some of you sitting here going, uh, wait a minute, like, I've got a job, I can't go to daily mass, and I get that. You know, you've got to look at your own state of life. I'm looking at mine. I'm not talking to you about yours. I'm telling you about mine and my epiphany here. So don't get all defensive if you're thinking, well, I can't, you know, I know what you're maybe thinking because I'm truly not pointing to you. I'm just sharing my epiphany that I was lukewarm. And it was my own decision. And then I would go back. So there would be times throughout this, these couple of years when my husband was retired where I would go back to Mass and I would go back to adoration and I would not get up super early, but I would try to dive more into my prayer. My rosary was better. And then I'd fall off. It would be like this roller coaster on and off, on and off. And I will tell you this, my husband used to say, wow, you're a different person when you come back from mass. And I get it because I was. I had God's love in my heart and the service attitude, you know, that servant leadership mindset where I just wanted to love my husband and do stuff for him and love the world and be out there. I couldn't wait to talk about God and all that kind of stuff. You know, that's how it goes when you're on fire. So if I look at my life right now, where I have nothing but time, I shouldn't say nothing but time because I'm so busy, but I have the freedom to get up when I want. And I had the freedom to do it before, but I would just wake him up. Unfortunately, I am praying so much more. I am talking to God all day, even more intensely because I need him. I need him to protect my heart. I need Mary to help him form more in me. I'm just telling you, I'm on fire now. And there's such a difference when I was lukewarm. And you know what happens when we're lukewarm. And if you don't, I'll tell you, because the Bible says God would rather have you hot or cold, not lukewarm. Because if you're lukewarm, there's three words. He's going to vomit you out of his mouth. He's going to spit you out of his mouth, or he's going to spew you out of his mouth. And that's what I was. And that's why Satan came in and gave me a lot of excuses. Look how long you haven't touched this stuff. You don't have a problem with it. You're not addicted. It doesn't impact you. Go ahead. And then I let him in. And there you go, my friends. That was my epiphany that I was lukewarm and I don't want anyone to be with their defenses down. You know, so like when you pray, pray. 
And I didn't do the best this morning. I've got to get moving because I'm meeting someone after mass. I'm going to the earlier mass. We're having breakfast. And I just didn't have the best prayer this morning. So my intent is when I'm done with her and I come back home to redo my prayer because he deserves it. It was distracted. It really was. And that's okay, by the way. If you can't redo your prayer because your state in life has you all busy today, as long as you sat down and you committed to that time and you gave it to God, St. Francis of DeSales says, it's all right. It could be the worst distracted prayer of your life. The fact that you actually did it is all that God cares about. So let's not think that we have to be these perfect prayer people Perfect in going to Mass every day and receiving the Eucharist. Perfect in, you know, weekly confession. We don't have to be perfect. I mean, I know be perfect as your Father is perfect. That's in the Bible. But in the end, we are also human beings. And He knows our struggles. I guess my whole point to this is what is it that's keeping you from prayer? What is it that's keeping you from praying the rosary every day? And when I say pray, I mean pray, not recite. Check out my Saturday morning with Kendra. I go into the rosary. It is so important to our life, and it is so important to all of the people who don't believe. All of these sinners out there, myself was one of them, and I still continue to be that, so I'm not pointing fingers, but we can pray for all of the people in our lives to be converted through the rosary. And I share the 15 promises, and I share some other beautiful things, but I think that's just the point I want everyone to look at themselves and say, am I kind of lukewarm here? Especially if you are fighting a sin, because you're not fully armored with God if you are lukewarm. If you're some days praying, some days not. Some days doing the rosary, doing the rosary, praying the rosary, (laughs) some days not. Other days you're praying the rosary deeply. Other days you're just checking the box, but you're getting it done. But God still wants our hearts. We have to look at mass and prayer and confession and everything as like our love for God. I'm going to do this because I love you, God. And if you don't have that love, and you're just going along because there's all these rules and you're trying to find that, that love for him, pray to Mary that you can love Jesus like she does. Vice versa, if you don't kind of have that thing going on for Mary, pray to Jesus that you can love Mary like he does. Okay, let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, life gets busy and sometimes we get duped into thinking that we don't have time for you. But we know that when we give you our time, when we're disciplined and when we love you and sit down, you always make our lives so much easier. You bring us peace, you bring us love, you bring us protection. Holy Spirit, please tickle our hearts right now. Tell us what it is that we are doing. Are we lukewarm? What can we do better so that we are in love with you more, where we seek you in prayer and seek you all throughout the day to help us do everything? Our to-do list, help us to love and relate to the people in our lives with your heart, not our selfish, complaining, selfish, selfish hearts. Mary, please take our left hand. Holy Spirit, take our right. Please lead us to Jesus where we will find that healing and that love that he wants from us, but we are seeking for it too. Lord, we're going to pray for all of the souls in purgatory by name.
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for me, a sinner, now and at the hour of my death. Amen. In your holy name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, I've got to get back to praying the Hail Mary the way that it's written. <laughs> Sorry, you're all probably like, why is she using you and me instead of thee and thou and though and all that? I mean, I was noticing that the other day when I was, last night, as a matter of fact, when I was praying my live eight o'clock prayer group, the Holy Rosary Family Prayer Group. And I'm like, I got to get back to saying it the right way because I'm sure I'm going to be speaking one day and someone's going to say, hey, can you lead us in the rosary? And I'll just do it all the crazy way. That is my rosary reflections where I bounce around so that you are not distracted. The rosary reflections for the distracted person. If you want one, send an email to me, Kendra at KendraVonAsh.com. I don't have a page where you can order it online. Um, $25, but if you get the book which is 15 together. It's 35. Just sharing that in case you want them. All righty, everyone. I love you all so much. I've got to get rolling. What a crazy morning. And I shortchanged Jesus. So I'm going to pay such good attention and pour my heart into mass. No doubt. All righty. Have a blessed and inspired day.